When you're driving the back roads, you probably see nature and beauty. But we see deals. Oh, wow. This is amazing. I'm Marty Gable, and I've been in the antiques business for more than 15 years. They call me Bam Bam. I love hunting down mantiques and anything with wheels. Oh, holy moly! It's like we're inside a treasure chest. Although we may be opposites, we travel together. Hoping to attract the best in back road bounty. Oh, man. Another of my buddies bought a bike the other day. Life changed. You know what I mean? How so? Well, it's just different. There's something about it. It's very freeing, man. Like, I've never, I'm not a big skydiver, but I feel like if you could control skydiving, it would be very similar. A lot of guys that ride bikes refer to cars and vehicles as cages. Yeah. Because once you've been outside of one, like right now, I really feel like I'm in this big metal collapsible box. We're gonna have you in like a confined space, not quite as small as a van like this. But uh, we're going to see a guy named Todd. He owns a place called Dale's. Okay. Now he's in the antiques business, and he runs a weekend market for antique dealers. So, but he's also got his own surplus area as well, full of stuff that you know just been lying around that apparently he wants to sell off. So, have you dealt with this guy? Like, do you know what kind of stuff we can expect in there? I have actually. I have been there a few times, and he's big on advertising and signs. Nice. Hello. How are you? I'm fine, and you? I'm doing good, Great. doing good. I'm Bam Bam. I'm Todd. Nice to meet you, Todd. How's it going? Nice to see you. Yeah, you can't miss the place. The buildings are phenomenal. What's the story out here? Uh, my dad, Dale, started the, uh, the antique market back in 1988. Wow. And uh, it's kind of grown from there. He actually built these uh, timber frame buildings himself. So wow. we have an antique market that runs on Sundays uh, throughout the seasons. So you've got an antique market, but what do you keep in this giant barn here? Uh, this is kind of our overflow area, so uh, everything that doesn't fit in the store, we kind of stick it in there until we have time to get it in the store. Well, overflow is always good. Do people like us ever get a chance to go in here and shop? If you would like to take oh, a peek through, that would, we that would like be fine. We would like to. Can't wait to get right. in here. Is Let's this take a the peek door? inside there? Yeah. We'll oh, just... they're huge. Open these doors here. All right. Oh, man. Now we're talking? This is way more than just regular overflow. This place is absolutely massive. Huge signs, a burner sign that's probably 10 feet across as soon as we walk in the door. And this is his overflow. This looks like an old examination chair or a dental chair. I believe it's a dental chair. Uh, I was told, uh, not confirmed, but I believe it's a railway dental chair. That looks very 60s to me. It's actually a portable piece that you can fold up and get your teeth fixed while you're riding the rails. <laughs> Great ideas. No cavities. Choo-choo! Out of curiosity, what are you asking for this guy, just the way it sits? For you, I would do 170. I'm really digging the dental chair. I think this is a really unique piece. It's got potential. I think I could bring it back to life. What do you think, Ben? It's an interesting chair. I've never seen one. I'm trying to picture it with some uh, cooler looking wheels on the back end. Yeah, I think someone's replaced those ones out there. Yeah, because so. those look like uh, lawnmower wheels on the back. I think it's got a lot of potential, but a bit of a project. Okay. I'll take it for 150. Sure. Awesome. Yeah. Okay, we got our first deal of the day, man. We got a deal of the day. Let's get in here, buddy. So with the old advertising and stuff and the primitives around here, was this stuff that your uh, dad Dale was into? We um, we always done a lot of advertising mm -hmm. and gas and all stuff. It, it's it's one of those things that just sells nowadays. So it's, right, it's uh, keeping its value on like some of the antiques. How long have you been running the business? Uh, I started in 1999 okay. and uh, bought the business in 2008. Okay. I've, I've added quite a bit of stuff over the years. Uh, what sort of stuff do you try to find when you're out and about? The dental chair is a good start. Yep. I like anything medical. medical. You know, I like some of this, the signs and the advertising as well, but I want a little more obscure, different stuff. That's the whole goal is to find something unusual and different than everybody else has got. It's all great stuff. Look at another Coke sign. That's kind of like the one that you had. That's a great graphic on the bottle, though. I'm surprised you don't have something like this in the main building. Room. It, it, just, that's it, eh? It's just, it's wall space. So, yeah. Uh... So we get to the end of the huge surplus aisle, passing all this incredible stuff, and there's one piece left. This huge, famous reading anthracite sign. That is a huge, huge enamel sign. It's got to be a 9 out of 10. It's in great shape. Maybe an 8 and a half. But it's high numbers. So this is the stuff I love. Yep. It's different. It's different. Yeah, it's awesome, but I've never seen this sign. What is this reading anthracite? 
Uh, anthracite is a, it's a, basically it's coal, it's a fuel source. Okay. And uh, so reading this would be an American sign. I gotta ask, where did you get it? It's been here before I arrived, so really? pre-1999. We like it, we're not in a hurry to, to move it. You've got it at 725. Yep. What would be your blowout deal on a sign like this? Probably five, that's it. Double-sided, you know, we'd probably be 1,200. That's a big ticket item to take a bit of a risk on. Like, I'm sure it's worth that, mm -hmm. but I'm not sure that I would have a buyer lined up to come and take it off my hands, and I don't have the wall space for that. I don't know if you guys would be interested or not, but I actually have another storage space full of stuff. Nobody's been in there, and it's been there for about two years, so if you're up to it... And... Oh, I think we might be up to it. Who wants to look at a storage locker full of boxes no one else has seen? We, we do! do. So this storage booth, I put stuff in there about two years ago. I uh, bought about seven big trailer loads of stuff. It's full of various items in boxes. I have no idea what's in there. Here we are. Yeah! yeah. All right, man. So this storage booth, I put stuff in there about two years ago. I uh, bought about seven big trailer loads of stuff. Who wants to look at a storage locker full of boxes no one else has seen? We, we do. do. Yeah! It's like a punch in the face. There's boxes of stuff everywhere. He wasn't lying when he said it was a storage locker full of stuff. You've got, you've got everything in here, right? From enamelware to... ET trading cards. We're diving in, and right on the top layer, there's medical bags. Right. Isn't that a me like a doctor's bag, a medical bag? It is, yeah. And it looks like there's uh... goodies in it. Yeah, there is it's some a goodie in bag. There. Be careful you don't get poked or something there. Should we be making piles, buddy? Yeah. So I think what I'll do is I'm just gonna start putting them outside. Yep. Here, this is all old medical stuff here, man. Fill in the pile, man. Nice, buddy. Now we're digging, buddy. Buttons, tiny shoes. Weird scissors, moving on. There are not many people who would want to sort through 100 to 200 different boxes to, to find that one item that they're looking for. Man, look at there's all kinds of medical shenanigans here, buddy. Oh. That one's that one's definitely pointy. So we have all kinds of surgical tools in here. That is nasty. But this is a that's a real mixed bag. Like some are too old, some are a little bit older than others. That's for wrecking teeth, isn't it? Yeah, some of them look like dental tools. I want to see if I can find some older ones. It was a real odd storage unit. Oh, Marty, I got something I think I like, but I don't know what it is, buddy. That's going to be one of those quack medical devices, I bet you. Oh, something, something electrical that heals your everything? Yeah, exactly. Oh, I love this stuff. <laughs> I know. There's no labels on it, huh? No, I couldn't find any. If we're making piles, that's mine good... has begun. That's a great start. I'm pretty sure it has something to do with playing with a small lightning bolt. We're gonna find out. Do you know anything about this person that had all these medical items and these quack? I know, don't know too devices? much about them. A fella, I think he was in the dental industry and um, he had people picking for him. I've been finding receipts from all over. Oh, to my okay. knowledge, he uh, went bankrupt. This is the last thing I'm gonna pass you, buddy. Oh, it's got keys and a tag on it. Rag. Somebody's initials. Am I gonna be able to get it open? If it's a bag of money, I'm gonna hang on to it. Just throw it in the pile. Yes. Don't negotiate. Yeah, I'm gonna throw it in the pile. Throw it in the pile, because it felt like money. I'm gonna let you open this. Keep us posted. Just so you know, there's the story goes that somewhere in this lot of stuff is a big jar or a canister full of gold teeth. What? <laughs> really? If you oh. find that, uh, I've called dibs on that already, so. I got it open here, but it has no money in it. Well, it's still a nice leather bag. We need out of this, Todd. 15. Put it in the pile. I have not got a clue what this is. So I pull out something cool. It's got a crank on the outside. I'm thinking it's gonna be a phonograph or something. Open it up. Sure. This is the knuckometer or the knuckometer, whatever you want to call it. Oh, nice. Automatic core transmitter, National Radio Institute. You recognize that, Todd? I don't. Turns out it's actually for transcribing Morse code. I think I need 40 for that. 40 for that, huh? There's a lot to look at here. I'm gonna put that aside and keep digging. Here, I'll pass this to you. Marty, there's some old bottles here. More old bottles? Tons of old bottles, man. One thing I don't buy a lot of is books, and that's never changed for me. But when I come across something that looks kinda unique or special, I'll grab it. What you got? Oh, that's totally going to the pile. I know a guy that's gonna love that. ABC and XYZ and B Culture. I've had that book. This book's been in publication since the 1800s. This one's from 1908. 
And it's still in print today. If you want to become a beekeeper... There it is. There it is. That's in Bam's pile. Story Titanic. of the wreck of Titanic, the ocean's greatest disaster. Published in 1912. That's the year that the Titanic went down. Yeah. So that's going to be full of, like, false uh, stories, too, right? I, I guess. They, they didn't know how it sunk. Hopefully there's some mistakes. Hopefully it's going to be an entertaining read, because I'm leaving with it. Just don't tell anybody. It'll ruin my image. Marty, do you want an old globe? It's in the box. Turns. Yeah, it turns. Shows you the world. Price has to be good, though, because I see a lot of those. Todd, how much on the globe? In the box, 15. All right, let's That's do it. It's gotta be worth it. Go in the pile for Marty. Oh, tell me there's gold teeth in here. It is not the gold teeth box. I'm opening up box after box after box. Yeah. Bunch of old matchbooks. Here, you want more? Oh, man. I know that we've only got so much time and so much room in the van. You don't want to see any enamelware, do you, Ben? No, I'm good. I'm trying to quit. My wheels start turning. So I pull Todd aside. Todd, there's a lot of stuff to go through in here. I think we're looking at a couple weeks' worth of work. I'm going to throw something crazy at you. OK. Have you thought about selling this all off in one big shot? I have not. And his wheels start turning. Um, hmm. Because he's used to buying in bulk, not selling in bulk. I would need, I'd need 3,500 for this booth, the way it is right now. I have no idea what's in these boxes. So we've got the starting price, and now I know he's willing to negotiate. So the game's on. So you know there's gonna be a lot of piles in here. It's gonna be a mishmash of everything. So it's a lot of sorting. Mm -hmm. If I wanna do a blind buy on this and I've gotta take it all out of here, I'm thinking more like $2,500. Um. We both know it's a lot of work. It is. And, but yeah, you're, you're taking a blind and, and I'm not sure what's in here. I couldn't do 25. I think my bottom would be three. And that's as, as is here, so. Well, there's no way I can cram all this in our van today. If your bottom line is $3,000, I'll do the deal if I can store it here and make a handful of trips to get it out. A deal. Yeah! We shook on it, and that was a smoking deal. I am jacked. Close the door! Well, listen, <laughs> since the deal wagon is rolling right now, yep. we were looking at that famous reading anthracite sign. Beautiful sign. Really a standout piece, and you're pretty firm on $500? Uh, yeah, I, I think okay. so. That's a great porcelain sign. If you'll throw in the few things I grabbed, a couple of books, the Titanic book, a beekeeper book, an OPP hat, yep. quack medical device, a really great picture of Camp Borden from 1916. If you throw that little handful of goodies in, I'll give you the $500 on that sign and take it off your hands today. I've had it for a while, so deal. Yeah, yeah. awesome. And I've got the $150 dental chair, too. Yes. Everybody wins. Everybody's a winner. You hear an awful lot about the haters. Uh, I'll be honest with you. I, I got no problem with Todd Hater. Instead of loading the van, let's just grab these boxes. We'll throw them in here. Sound Load good? Load the locker. Better idea when you guys do it. I've already moved it once. It's now <laughs> yours. Fair enough. I don't care. You know, that stuff's been sitting there for two years now. It's taking up some storage space that I could be renting out. I thought his offer was fair. Sold! Done! Hey, uh, you got three grand cash on you for that locker? <laughs> Didn't you take a check? Oh. And I, and I owe you? Today was an awesome day with Todd. I found one of the best signs I've ever seen, and I'm leaving with it. And I'm not leaving with anything today, because it's all in the storage locker. So I'm taking my sweet time editing that out. Well, that took an odd turn. It went from me shopping to me watching you extreme shopping. I know. Well, I never expected to buy a whole locker. And there's a ton of great stuff in there. Every time we looked, there was more oddities, and everyone in this industry is looking for its unique items. Right. And that locker has them in spades, man. I like my locker. I like it a lot more when I go through and see what's in there. Make sure I made a good deal. <laughs>of driving every day in a van if you're driving across the country what kind of car would you drive honestly something i've wanted to do ever since i've had a bike was actually ride a motorbike across the country 
I'd have to do in a convertible. Ah. For sure. Top down as much as possible. Something vintage, maybe like a Jaguar. Oh. Something, something with some power too, and some style. Great news. Bill and Beth are collectors, and from way back, and apparently stuff that we're really interested in. They didn't really specify, but I got a good feeling about them. Hello there. Good Hi. morning. How you doing? Bam Bam. Bam Bam? Hey. Bill? Hey. And Beth? <laughs> hey, Bill. I'm Marty. How are you? <laughs> Just yeah. great. How are you guys today? Great. Hey, couldn't be much better. This is quite the little retreat you've got wow. here. We, we saw the lake like from it. the road. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's yeah. what won us over. Yeah. Are you selling the view? Uh, well, we could sell the view if you make us the right offer. But <laughs> in the meantime, we got a lot of stuff that we've accumulated over... Well, I started when I was five, and I've not been five in a long time. Wow. Bill takes the blame for being the biggest collector. Yes. You know, he, yeah. he sort of got me sucked in a little bit, but on certain things, but he's the major collector. What kind Even, of stuff? Well, movie posters, mm -hmm. lots of cameras. Some uh, books. Books. Some books pulps, so. A little bit of mid-century modern furniture, burners, you know. Yeah, a little, yeah, a little bit well, of everything. Yeah. I think you hit about <laughs> almost everything on my checklist. Yes. So why are you selling all this stuff? It's a point at which we were ready to downsize. We've been here about six years. We were just saying over coffee this morning, we were looking to upsize a little oh, bit. No. This could work really, really Meeting well. Meeting of minds. Yeah. Meeting of yeah. minds. It's going to work great. Come Step inside in. our door. All right, all let's right, take a look. Away. Right to your left. Oh, it's all right to the left. Oh, the right. smokes, man. Today we're visiting Bill and Bat, and it sounds like they've got a lot of really cool memorabilia. Come Step on inside in. our door. All right, All let's right. take a look. Way. And they're the exact opposite of us. They're downsizing. Well, we're going to upsize today. Right to your left. Oh, it's all right to the left. Oh, to the smokes, right. man. We're like kids in a candy store. Everything that we had from our childhood is there. I think if I were in their shoes, I'd feel the same way because we've got some pretty cool stuff, obviously. How much down here is for sale? Well, uh, everything except this that cabinet one. and my Burroughs stuff. I've been collecting Edgar Rice Burroughs for almost 60 years. Tarzan, is this your number one thing? My number one thing. When I was very, very little, kid in the neighborhood was moving, gave me a stack of comics, and right on top was a Tarzan comic. Fell in love with the cover. And I opened it up and started paging through it, and I could read just enough to get through the story, and that was it. I was hooked. I've oh, hooked man. ever since. Is this your Jane? This oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Did you win her over with like a? Oh! I've never caught him swinging on a vine in a loincloth. No. There's definitely some treasure in here. Oh, oh wow. wow! That's the Chinatown. I wonder where that. Oh no, that's, that's fair fair my love. My love. Oh, okay. I've never seen this one. Yeah. Really? It's a Raymond yeah. Chandler. It's a remake. Oh, I see. Yeah. Philip yeah. Marlowe. Yeah. Doesn't ring a bell with me. Well, you're getting an education. They, they had kind of the same memories that we did. Maybe maybe a little, you know, a little bit, uh, a bit a younger. Generation a generation apart. difference. Chinatown with Jack Nicholson. There's a date stamp for 1974 here. How much would you want for something like this? I haven't followed the prices. Prices, yeah. 50? Hmm. Hmm. Mm hmm. Do you like it? No, I was oh. just saying, hmm, because everybody else was saying, hmm, because everybody else was saying, hmm, because I'm going to put it in a pile. OK. A couple posters really talked to me. There was a great Lady in the Tramp poster. Now, what's the story on this? My, my favorite cartoon of all time is Lady in the Tramp, so we had to have it when we saw it. Kind of reminds me of the old lady and myself. Now, to be clear, a tramp at the time meant a wanderer. I'm definitely no lady, so. <laughs> oh, you're the tramp. Yeah. What would you What would you want out of something like this? Twenty-seven bucks. I was thinking twenty-five. If you said twenty-seven, I'll take it. I'll do, I'll do twenty-seven. There you go. <laughs> I pulled the trigger early and said twenty-seven bucks. The asking price is twenty-five. Advantage them. This was neat because it was the first feature length animated film that was released. This one's got a date of 58 on it. So that was the re -release. Re that re release. They would re release about a seven year cycle. What do you want for it? Um, I'd say maybe 50. I'm going to set it in a pile. Okay. 
There you go. And see if I can't sweeten that pot sweeten, a little okay. bit. I set it aside, hoping I could get a little more and maybe package something together, and I'm really glad I did. What is this thing? Because I found what appears to be a real old version of a pinball game. I'm guessing that goes back to the 1880s. Does it have a name? Is it just pinball? Pinball was a much later addition. That's a bagatelle. Bagatelle. I don't know, really know the origin, but I know there's bagatelle in, in France, and I assume that that's the, maybe the Vegas of its era, and this was a game named in honor of it. It's nice. Like, you just set it on any table. Don't need power. Nope. Grab some marbles and try and get a high score. What are you asking for this? Not too many of them around. What do you think? I'm still thinking about the one Snow White poster, and I'm thinking for both how does 100 bucks feel? 120 feels better. 110 on the pair. Done and done. Yes! <laughs> Buddy, I own a bagatelle. You I cannot sure do. tell you what it is, but <laughs> I own it. I know Bill loves his Tarzan stuff, and I tell him, well, I love Superman stuff. Well, he disappears for a second, and he comes back with a couple really awesome pieces. This is from 99. Yeah. Masterpiece edition of the 1938 Superman and a book. And the comic. I know we paid pretty good money for these brand new back in the day, but I don't know if they've lost value. And then Bam Bam's looking at a watch. A vintage style wristwatch. It's got a case that's shaped like the Daily Planet, and it's never been used. And it's a 1993 oh, watch. 93. It was made as a collector's sure. piece, so it's one of 1,500. No, it's not, not a watch I'd wear. It's kind of a watch you put in your collection. What do you want out of the watch? How about 50? Hmm. That's less than retail. And I know that for sure. I do too, because I have the tag. And how much do you want out of the statue with the comics? 50. How about um, 80 for the two? I'll do 80 for the two. Nice. There's our deal. You know, it's like kryptonite to me. I know. The Superman stuff is. Yeah. You guys have the talking Viewmaster yeah. for real? Yeah. Yep. I have so many of the cartridges for this. Oh, do you really? And every time I get one, it doesn't work. <laughs> Does this work? As far as I know, yeah. Well, Everyone I mean, knows about the Viewmasters, but not, not a ton talking. of people know about the talking That's Viewmaster. True. That was a unique little wrinkle. It wasn't real successful. They tried a different, couple of different ways. But how unique was that in the pre-digital era? Oh, that is awesome. As you watch it, it tells you what's going on. Absolute cutting edge technology. Maybe needs oh batteries. yeah, needs batteries. You know what? I'm a risk taker, and I'm here to take some risks on toys. <laughs> what do you guys want for this? How about 25? I'll give you 20, and I'm keeping the two dead batteries. <laughs> we got a deal. Yes! He does enjoy talking, so a talking Viewmaster is a perfect, perfect fit for his collection. Hey, Mark. Oh, he's got now, this is not a reproduction. One thing I'm always looking for, Werner's stuff. It's a little more collectible. It's almost local to Marty and I. And it's something that just about everybody that had an experience with wants a collectible item from. This would be an early 60s sign. Yeah. It's in good shape. Werner's is super collectible. And it's not ginger ale. It's yeah. ginger beer. Ginger beer, yeah. It's well, very it's different. different. It is. It oh, is different. It's great. It tastes so good. Yeah. Bam Bam shared my love of Verner's. I'm a big Verner's collector, so we always had Verner's, and uh, it's a childhood memory for me. There's nothing like a good friendship over a Verner's. I have two, so I'd be willing to part with that. That sounds that like one. it's a sale. <laughs> what do you want for this, this sweet little sign? Um, um, Wondering about prices, because usually when I see a Werner's item, it's got so much sentimental value that I just can't realistically purchase it. 25? Done. Not gonna haggle at all. And for $25? Are you kidding me? Oh. Now, while the great deals are going, I saw some green and some shiny over here. There's a couple of Werner's coolers over a there. A couple of Werner's yeah, coolers. Yeah, one's a silver one and one's oh. a green one. Wow, so I'm guessing you know, you got, you're downsizing. You probably don't need these well, coolers. Well, You've got a fridge. This one's small. I could find a place for it. Okay. But that one's a little big, so. And it's really clean. I don't know how old this one is. This is gonna be 1960s. I think that one's maybe a little older. A little older. bit older here. Yeah. This, one, this one could still be maybe early 60s, late 50s. Yeah. You're, you're keeping the best one. Sorry. Which is, in all fairness, what I would totally yeah, do. Yeah, well, you know. <laughs> but that means you're just gonna give me a better deal on this one. And that deal is. Da -da 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 -da. <laughs> Oh, you know, we got that. We got that in Ohio. You know, we've never used them as coolers. Did we ever use them as coolers? Nope. No, we only just displayed She's them. totally dodging the price. She is. <laughs>
Use them as coolers. Did we ever use them as coolers? Nope. No, we only just displayed them. She's totally them. dodging the price. She is. <laughs> 50. Yeah. That wasn't so hard, was yeah. it? <laughs> We're already having the time of our lives. On top of that, there's some really cool mid century furniture. Yeah. Is this for sale? Yeah, Could be. it is. It's made by Lane. It's a nice matching two piece set and two tone walnut, true mid century 60s. They did make a lot. Lay made a lot of furniture, but it's got a very distinct look to it. And then you've got the matching side table. Yeah. So, how much would you want for these? Maybe 200 for the set? I'll give you 150 for the coffee table and the side table. Deal. Awesome. And then I see this really great lithograph hanging on the wall. I'm building yeah. my living room right now. Oh. It's great. Yeah, I just really liked it because it's New York pre Twin Towers, pre, it's a, a New York in the 60s. It's signed, it's got the artist information on the back. W. Yeah. Woodward. Yeah. So he's an Australian born artist. Yeah. yeah. How much do you need out of this? 75? 75. That's a pretty reasonable price. But right next to it is a really awesome lunar globe. This one's more from the 70s. What's the best deal you could give me on the two pieces here? Would you go 100 on the pair? Yeah, I'll do that. All right. How old are 3D cameras? 3D has been shot for a long, long time. Some of the earliest pictures ever shot in the 1840s were done in 3D. A lot of people don't realize that. It's been around for a long time. This is really impressive. I'm a guy who's always loved the stereoscopic viewers. I've got a pretty good collection, but nothing like this. It's just, they're just great. And the first time, you know, when you're three, four, five years old and your eyes are far enough apart that you can actually see through a Viewmaster viewer, it's, it's a life-changing experience. It pops out at you and you go, oh, I gotta have more of that. This is an interesting one. I've got a lot of Viewmasters, stereoscopic mm -hmm. viewers. I don't have this one. That's a real early one, that's the B. The first one that came out was really, really, very, very similar to that, but really, really light plastic. This is more like uh, Bakelite. Yeah. And it was a much better viewer, uh, leaps ahead of, of the other one. They all work on exactly the same principle. How much would you have to get for, you know, this this round guy stands out, a little different style than most of them? Well, since you're such a nice guy and you're a fan of 3D and we are a special breed, are we not? Absolutely. How about 25 bucks? Done. Oh. Deal. He's not the only fan of 3D. I found a pair of 3D underwear. They're a size small, so they're gonna be a little small <laughs> for me. That's pretty crazy. <laughs> Holy smokes. Five bucks. Five, five bucks done. Awesome. Done. And yeah, I'll throw in the glasses. Sweet. What is that? It's an old map. An old school oh, map. And mm. it's not just the United States. Yeah, it's got Canada up at the top. It smells like old school room. Yeah. Big oversized piece. It really fits into the theme, like the furniture I'm buying and everything yes. else. How much do you want out of this? 25? I'll take it for 25. Oh, jackpot. Marty, remember I was saying how I've got Viewmaster reels that have the record on them? Uh-huh. I'm not the only one. All right, I'm gonna set those aside. Oh, chock full of reels. And nice. indexed, sort of. So these are all places, Niagara Falls, Scenic Coast. How much would you want for a, a carton full of slides? You know, you'll never have to leave your home again. Which is probably like best for everybody. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> think of the gas you'll save. <laughs> I think that's worth $100. Holy chiminies. Those are beautiful things to see. They still look good. He's gonna pick up one, and he won't stop until he gets to the other end of the box. If you threw these in, I would pay you a collector's price of 45 bucks on all that. Make it 50 and we'll do a deal. I'll do it, but I know there's more shopping going on. <laughs> Well, you guys were going over all that stuff there. I was doing some serious shopping. I found this old uh, NBC poster too. Oh, yeah. Bonanza. Ooh. I Spy. Yeah. The Man from oh, Uncle. Oh, that's great. My Who's personal favorite. Guest? Get Smart, which is oh, the Get Smart. Yeah. Isn't that great? So that's a fun little collection. So what would you want for the collection of four? 30. OK. Let me just add a couple things to the pile here. Everyone's seen The Twilight Zone, at least one episode. Best show on TV. Mm -hmm. And we've still got to talk about the Chinatown one. So you wanted 50 for Chinatown, you wanted 30 for the set of four from NBC Studios. That puts us at 80, and then we've got The Twilight Zone from the 80s. I was thinking, how about we go 75? We got it. And now we're in like random department, okay? Yes. Superman original radio broadcast, volumes one through four. So it's the first, uh, I think, uh, like 16 episodes or something of the radio show. The radio show. From the 40s. 
I found a newer Superman <laughs> mouse pad. We've got a 1939 Detroit Street Guide, mm -hmm. a couple of eight millimeter movies. The last thing in this little pile is a loaf of bread. Yes. With a fire truck inside that of it. Fresh. Oh, it's got, I, didn't, I don't remember that one. This is gonna be from probably the late 50s, yep. early 60s. Late 50s. Late 50s. And it fits in with the theme of everything else I seem to be buying today. <laughs> you just hit me with a price and we'll see how we go from there. How about 70? We've got a deal at 70. Oh, Marty, I told you I wasn't done shopping, buddy. Look at all this stuff. You got toys? I got a whole bag. This is like a Bamteeks bag. Got some of the mini Lesnies in here, a matchbox. And then you've got, you know, a couple of little toys here, a couple of really good ones, a couple of average ones. Uh, hit me with the price. Uh, how about for the whole thing, 40 bucks? Done. I don't know how I got, you know, going through the TV guides, and I think it's a more of a nostalgia thing, right? Because they're talking about, you know, the superheroes coming to the screen. And there's this one here, which is hilarious. It's a fall preview. It's Bart Simpson versus a Cosby show, they're, and they're going head to head on Thursday nights. We know who won that one. Uh -huh. What would you want for a box? 40 bucks for the box? Well, 40 bucks? Why not? TV guides, that was a wild card. Awesome. Well, let's get out there and make a pile and see what kind of upsizing we did today while they downsized. Today was one of the best days I've had in a while, Tarzan and Jane. So thank you very much for that. Oh, you're welcome. You can see I've got a heaping pile here. Where do we start? <laughs> the two nice tables, we got the Lane coffee table here and the matching side table. Paid you 150 for that. So we got the New York City lithograph here, the globe, and a package deal for $100. And we didn't stop there because we got the big old school map for $25. And then we got all kinds of random stuff over here. We have the Chinatown poster, Twilight Zone, and then the four posters from NBC Studios. And that was a $75 package. And then we got another mixed mix lot here too. I pulled it out, it was $70. Underneath that, I think I just got reading a little bit and I was like, I miss all of these shows. And I paid you $40 for the whole box of those. <laughs> 3D boxer shorts with the 3D glasses, $5. And then we've got the two Superman items. It was $80 for those. I managed to drop $545 today on a little bit of everything. I think I could actually start setting up a living room with what I've got in furniture and maps and art. So I'm really happy. Thanks again for everything oh, today. Absolutely. You're welcome. Pleasure. Marty got some pretty nice stuff. But as usual, I got cooler stuff than Marty. Like this sweet, sweet Burr's cooler. Even though you're keeping the green one, this one has a lot of appeal. And at 50 bucks, I'm filling it with treasure. I jumped in, I found some talking reels, grabbed a box. They've all been cataloged. And I came in at 50 bucks on these, and I'm really happy about it. Found another little viewing device. I definitely like that. And then in that same box was a lot of these little toys. And they're great. The Tootsie toys, really, really collectible. For 40 bucks, can't walk away from that. That's all gonna go on display. Again, I love the viewers, and I've never seen one like this. For 25 bucks for one I've never seen, man. When we were looking through the movie stuff, the Lady and the Tramp one, I think I pulled the trigger a little early at 27 bucks, but I'm taking it home. <laughs> and I saw the Snow White one as well. And you were asking about $50 on it. Packaged it with this, and I get them both for 100 bucks. And this, you were asking 25, trying to get deals, I offered you 20 and you took it. And one more Werner's piece. I'd be a fool to pass this up at your asking price of $25, so I'm not gonna do it which puts me at a grand total of $337. Sounds good. Thank you both Great. so much. All right, well, let's, uh, let's load up the van. All right, game on. One more thing. In honor of my favorite hero and Johnny Weissmiller, I want to hear a yell. Here we go. Oh! Right. Yeah! Bill and Beth were actually downsizing. These people had been collecting great stuff, but they wanted to let it go. Collect a collection of everything. There's lots left over. We could come back shopping for another week. How awesome was that? I was in awe of finding things that I didn't know existed and finding things that I've been looking for. A talking view master? Right. Man, people don't even believe those. I couldn't have asked for a better day. Four better people. No. Verners, great people, cottage country. We are living the dream. kind of days. No rushing, just get to chill out, drive, see what it's out there, looking for yard sales. So keep your eyes peeled. 
Yeah, everyone out here has, you know what I mean, donate your scrap metal here. Yeah. You know, just had a yard sale here. It's hard to distinguish, you know, the junk piles from a yard sale. Hang on. We got a winner. We got a yard sale sign. When we're cruising along, driving down the back roads, and we're running into yard sales and stuff, you never know what you're going to see. More importantly, you never know who you're going to find. We got a sale. In this case, we come rolling up. A little sale happened, a couple tables lied out, some plants. So we stop. We get about three feet into this, and we see a hat. Underneath this hat, what looks like a rifle. Not an inviting sign. How are you today? I'm doing well. Come to buy me out, or? Whoa, don't you? I'm doing well. Come to buy me out or? Whoa, don't shoot. Hi, how are you? I'm doing good, I think. <laughs> He's harmless. If you're in a yard sale and you want to sell stuff, I think the last thing you want to be doing is holding a rifle on your front porch. I, I'd be holding up like a balloon that says yard sale. My name's Cliff. I'm Bam glad Bam. you dropped in. Hey, I'm Marty. Hi, Bam Bam. I'm Lori. I'm Cliff's daughter. Nice Hi, Lori. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Most of the time, the customers get kind of scared. It's a BB gun. It's not a real gun. It's a toy. Here, you, you can shoot him, too. Okay. Right. <laughs> What's going on here today? You got a plant sale and a yard sale? Yeah. How long have you been doing this for? There's I a just, lot of stuff. I just started this this weekend, but my wife had a flea market, and she died, and I'm just clearing the stuff. Sorry to hear that. So you've got uh, quite the task ahead of you. A lot. Yeah, there's stuff everywhere. You're busting at the seams. That's why I got a hose up for sale. I don't need a big hose for one person. Cliff's wife passed away a couple years ago, and this is all her stuff, and she ran a flea market. And now he's got to sell it because he wants to get rid of it all and then eventually sell the house. It's a sad situation. He's trying to make the best of it. And while we're here, hopefully we can find some treasure. So you're selling all this stuff. Do you see any prices on anything, Marty? No, yeah, I didn't have time to put prices on. I know it's worth, though. Okay. I'm open to offers. And if we don't like the price, can I fire one of these off? Like a warning shot? Yeah, sure. There's your negotiating tool. Take it all, please. Oh, there you go, man. You've Trying got the invitation. Trying to get my dad to downsize. We'll see how it goes here, I guess. It's a free oh, yeah. drink. Yeah, it's a free drink. Well, yeah, I know. You're I was going to say, I, I'm, I'm parched. <laughs> I, I'm guessing you sold your tarps before the rain. Do you well, think I'd want to do all way. these, a man would want to wash all these dishes, hey? Not this man. Nature did it. You know, formerly I was a meteorologist, and I, I would do the weather, and I thought I would say there was probably about six inches of rain last night. So, Cliff, I'm going to fill you out here a little bit. So you've got a little butter dish here. It's from the 70s, made by Pyrex. Yeah. How much is that? Two dollars. It's actually pretty collectible, even the stuff from the 60s and the 70s, like that piece. OK, I'm going to build a pile right here on top of the lawnmower. This looks like a portable uh, oh, refrigerator. Oh, fridge. You keep your very small drink school. You take that little fridge, it will fit perfectly in your van. Keep your drinks cool. I don't know. Marty has this thing where he doesn't want anything cooler than him in the van. <laughs> <laughs> so it's looking like there might be more in the garage here. Is it all right if I tour back? Yeah. I'm following him. He's got the gun. OK. Don't trip. I think Bam Bam is a little dear as far as I'm concerned. No, Dad. It's Bambi, not Bam Bam. <laughs> Check this out. Are you going to show me? Books, old books. Anybody can play. There's Bert and Ernie. They're really getting jiggy yeah. with it. I'm not sure who that is in the background. Do you remember her name? I don't remember a girl being involved in their relationship, to tell you the truth, Marty. So what do you think it is, Cliff, about two guys who have been roommates for, what, 30, 40 years now? Uh -huh. They hang out together. They do everything together. That looks like wrestling. He's doing a body slam right now. If you actually read the book, it says Ernie's tickling Bert. Uh -huh. I think she's freaking out because they're having an affair. <laughs> oh. yeah. I think they thought the characters were gay. Yeah. She's upset she caught them red-handed. Well, I don't know. I couldn't. I'm not gay, so I can't tell. <laughs> Marty, why do you keep carrying that gun around? Are you interested in buying that one? Well, not really. It's more of a negotiation tool than anything. Bam Bam, you love this stuff. Yeah, I like pellet guns. It's got a bit of wear. It's an older gun. It's missing parts. It's got a screw for a sight. Been dry firing it for I don't know how long. <laughs> yeah, but it would look good on somebody's wall. It would. It would. The price would have to be very, very right. What do you want out of this? 35. 35 bucks? 20 bucks. Get rid of it. Not. For 20 bucks, I'll put it in the pile. And I felt safer taking it out of his hands. Safer for the whole neighborhood. You know what's going to happen? He's going to go get the loaded one and chase me out of here. Hey, Marty. Yeah. Remember that time you left early at the dance because you were going to turn into a pumpkin? Oh, there's my shoe. I think they found your shoe, Cinderella. Uh, <laughs> usually you see that uh, kids' shoes, bronze and stuff like that, right, yeah. when they're babies, but not a full-size men's boot. Yeah. 
But this one, you can tell it's a re retail display because of the base on it, so they would have had it mounted like this. Yeah. I think it's probably from the 1970s, but because it's bronze, it's different, and everyone likes different. I'm not a huge basketball guy, but I'm pretty sure that's LeBron's shoe. <sighs> well, I'm gonna ask you for a price. How much do you offer? Ten dollars. Make it 20 and you own it. 15, negotiate here. Hey, 15, going in the pile. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> What time are you going home? I'm going to stay here and make sure you sell some stuff and get rid of it. I'm not hanging on to it, but I want to get a decent price. No. you got to clean this stuff up. Yvonne's gone now. She's passed away. You don't need all this stuff. I don't need to it's clean stressful. it up. The rain did for me. <laughs> <laughs> so is everything for sale back here? Yes, get rid of it. Not my tools. Before you did this, what did you do for a living? Contractor. Built houses and that. Bought houses. Sweet. We sold them, yeah. So are you retired? Trying. Oh, here's something cool. That's for wearing mar away of marijuana and cocaine. <laughs> oh, here's something cool. That's for wearing mar away of marijuana and this, cocaine. That, that's a lot of pot. It goes up to a kilogram. Yeah, Where'd I, you get this? I bought it off a of dope dealer. I won't tell you who he was, because he's dead now. Apparently, his friend was Pablo Escobar. <laughs> it's a true story. I bought that from a dope dealer. How much do you want for the scale? $25. They're worth a lot of money, them. The scale looks like it's from the 1960s. It was a nice, compact size. You could throw it on a shelf. Easy sell for me. $15. Get rid of it. 15 Deal. Sounds great to me. Uh, I <laughs> Sorry. paid more than that to the dope dealer. I paid $40, and you sold it for 15 Oh, wow. So how long do you plan to run these sales for? I'm gonna you know, try and run until I get rid of this stuff. Oh, Either okay. that, I'm gonna call an auctioneer. I'm looking around and I'm seeing a lot of flea market yard sales type things, right? Yeah. And if Bam Bam and I came in here and we said, how much do you want for everything in the driveway and all like you know the loose stuff here in the garage? Mm -hmm. What would you say? Five thousand dollars. And I'd say. You've still got some dope lying around from that scale. Yes. <laughs> but Cliff and his daughter have a very different view of the value of this stuff and how it should be handled. So I just don't think no matter what people offer you right now, you're holding on to it because it's part of Yvonne. Yeah, well, I can have an auction come, auctioneer come right here. I was going to. I said, oh, I'll have a couple of yard sales because I'll get probably get more in the yard sale. I think the longer he hangs on to stuff, though, it's going to get more damaged and it's not going to be worth anything. Only you'll know when the time is right yeah. <laughs> to box it all up and set it off to auction, right? Yeah. I didn't find a ton of treasure, but I'll take a shot at this deal. It's missing one little part, but I can get that for it. So I'll give you 20 bucks for that. I got a couple cool pieces. I got the vintage butter dish for $2. Got this for $15 here, the nice dope scale. <laughs> and uh, the retail display copper shoe, $15. Nice. Hey, if the shoe fits, right? That's right. $32. That's not too bad. Give it to her. Maybe wow, she can run away. Awesome. Well, hey, thank you yeah. so much. It was great meeting you guys. Thanks. Nice meeting you, Clint. Nice meeting you, Lori. Nice uh, and thank I think you. we've made nice the neighborhood a little safer. Yeah, I think so. Put that under the seat. At this stage in the game, it might be easier and less cumbersome for him to just sell all this flea market stuff to someone with a flea market and then just sit back and focus on him. Well, you know what? Cliff was an interesting cat. You know what? At the end of the day, we still had some fun. We saw some cool stuff. And I got a big bronze shoe. You know, it seems like you got that big bronze shoe on the gas pedal right now. What's the deal, fella? I'm hungry. I'm tired. I'm hangry. It's terrifying. I don't go to rides at the fair anymore. I'm just like, no, no I'm going to take a quick boot with Marty. So we got a box of metal in here. Remember we went to go see uh, Todd? Oh, the yeah. The storage locker. Yeah. <laughs> I've been digging through it quite a bit. I've seen a lot of stuff. This is a little sampling on top here. We've got like, an old folding camera. You've got the old uh, gas nozzle there. Do you know what this is? Oh, yeah. It's a potato cutter or a cheese cutter? It's actually for butter. For oh, it's them a off. butter cutter. It's a butter cutter. This is just one little bin. I know even if those few items there sell and the rest is scrap metal, there's about $80 just sitting in this little box. I paid $3,000 for all the contents in there. OK. I've been digging through it for a while now. I haven't gone through all of it yet, but I see about $5,000 in there already. Seriously? 
So it's safe to say there should be six or seven thousand dollars in there, maybe more by the time I'm done. Man, that's a great deal, and on kind of a blind buy. Yeah, I've been doing a little hustling, but not digging around like this. Do you remember Bill and Beth? Of course I do. I grabbed some great Werner stuff while I was there. I know it's collectible. I love collecting some of it. So I've got some interest right now in that chalkboard. Mm -hmm. I paid 25 bucks for it. <laughs> yes. I've got a guy coming to look at it for 75 and seen some Werner stuff go for a lot of money, but I got a great deal. If I can mm -hmm. pass on a great deal and cover myself, deal. Remember how we were talking about our favorite cars and stuff like that? Yeah. It didn't even occur to me to think that I would love to have one of these classics here. The 1960s Batmobile, Adam West, Burt Ward. That would be super cool. I know, just to drive one of those for a day would be awesome. Oh. I mean, this is out of my collection, actually. I was digging through it a little bit, seeing what I still have, because you kind of forget when you stash it away. So I'm thinking about upgrading, see so if I can find one that's actually got Robin inside, because you see he's missing. Oh, no, Robin inside is not an upgrade. Who told you that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I would love to have one of these. I think they're pretty slick. All right, well, I will leave you here to fight crime, even though I'm pretty sure it's a crime to put Robin in that car, and I'll catch up with you later. All right. Cheers, buddy. Can I sell you a utility belt? No, you cannot. <laughs>